So this is a revision video on meiosis. So there are five revision questions. Pause the video, complete the questions, and then we can take a look at answers. So question one, what is the function of meiosis? So the function of meiosis is to produce gametes. So before we go on to answering question two, there's just a few things that I wanted to discuss so in the image you'll see that there are eight chromosomes. One of those sets in blue is from parent one, the mother we could say in this case, and the red set is from parent two, the father in this case. And so there they are pairs of homologous chromosomes. So each, each of those chromosomes will carry the same genes but they'll actually carry different forms of the same gene potentially. Uh, one form from the mother and one from the father. So if we were to uh, look at a specific location on one of those chromosomes where we would find a gene, we call that a locus, what we would find there are alleles. So they are different forms of the same gene. So now if we look at the cell, you remember that during interphase, DNA is replicated. So if our example cell was going to undergo meiosis, during interphase, the DNA would be replicated. And then during prophase one, DNA will condense to form chromosomes. And so because those chromosomes are replicated, we see them with two chromatids. And so in this case, as we've shown, the parent cell is always diploid. So in our example, it has eight chromosomes. And so let's look at question two, the answer to question two. So what we'll do is we'll go through uh, the meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, and we'll look at the key bits of information you, you need to have written down as part of those animations. So in meiosis 1, there's some events that will happen during prophase 1. You should recognise those. So nuclear envelope disintegrates, the nucleolus disappears, and already in our example, centrioles have migrated to the poles and spindle fibers are starting to be produced. Really important thing that happens here in terms of creating genetic variability is this. And you should recognize that this process is called, so that's where the homologous pairs of chromosomes line up at the equator in a random fashion. So as you can see, parent one and parent two are on either side. They're not, it's not just parent one on one side and parent two on the other side. There's been random alignment of the homologous chromosomes and that's independent segregation. So something else that can result in genetic variability at this stage during metaphase one is this. And so what you should have seen there with the second set of homologous chromosomes is that their chromatids crossed over and they swapped a part of their chromatid. And you can see that in the colour change. And this is described as a genetic recombination. So now let's continue with the process of meiosis. So from here, metaphase one, We'll go through the animation. And so now we're at the end of uh, meiosis one. 
So we've got these two cells in which the homologous chromosomes have been separated into. So now we continue on to meiosis two. And so by the end of meiosis two, we have four gametes, and these are haploid, so they have one set of chromosomes each. So in our example, they have four chromosomes each. A really important feature of these gametes is that they're genetically different from that parent cell and from each other as a consequence of independent segregation and of crossing over. But remember that crossing over is a rare event, so it only happens very occasionally. So not all of the chromosomes will have undergone crossing over. So that answers question three. So within those animations, there were the key points that you should have recognised. So let's move on to question four. So for A, the calculation for chromosome combinations in gametes is 2 to the power n, and n is the number of pairs of homologous chromosomes. So in our example, we said there are 8. This would be 256. And for B, we square that number. And so it's 6, 65,536 possibilities. So finally, let's move on to chromosome mutations. So the two types of chromosome mutations. So the first and so in this example, I'm just showing three sets of chromosomes. So this is this is common in plants, polyploidy. And then the second type of chromosome mutation is so I'm showing our example of our gametes and you'll notice in the gametes that have been circled one of the gametes has one less chromosome, one has an extra chromosome. And so if one of those gametes is involved in fertilization, the resulting cells of the organism will have either one fewer chromosome or one extra chromosome in all its body cells. And so an example of this in humans is Down syndrome where uh, individuals have an extra chromosome 21. So that is meiosis and chromosome mutations.